Welcome to Contemporary Black Voices, where we take on the most important issues confronting Black America. Our discussion features the regular panelists, the lovely Dr. Sharon Michael Chadwell, New York Times bestselling author, Caleb Alexander, and of course, the writer, Fred Williams. I'm Chris Dawkins, and I'll be your host today. Today, we will discuss the Nation of Islam, often referred to as NOI. American Black people have shunned the Nation of Islam for two reasons. One, because most don't understand NOI, and two, Black people have a serious issue in following anyone. As Black people, we should want to stand for something, and the Nation of Islam knows who they are, and they have a set of principles that they believe in and follow. As Black Americans, we have no principles of ideals in which we believe as a race. Within our race, we do have Christian beliefs, and within Christian beliefs, we have Baptist beliefs, Methodist beliefs, Seventh-day Adventist beliefs, etc. As you can see, as a people, we are very divided with religion being one of the most divisive issues. We have nothing to unify black people. However, the Nation of Islam seems to have solved this issue, but the religion of the Nation of Islam has seems to rub Christians the wrong way. I would like to welcome our guests today, Brother Cedric Mohammed, student minister coordinator of San Antonio. And then let me go ahead and open up the discussion uh, with our guests and panelists. Welcome, Brother Cedric. Yes, sir. Thank you. So uh, I would like to ask you, uh, give us a little bit about yourself and uh, tell us about the nation. Thank you, Brother Chris. Thank you, fellow panelists. You guys are awesome. Thank you for this opportunity to share uh, from the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Uh, just to give a brief, brief synopsis of who I am, I was born and raised in Austin, Texas. Uh, uh, we established the Nation of Islam in Austin, Texas, when there was no Nation of Islam. Uh, and over the years, uh, I, I was blessed to be in the presence uh, and, and guidance of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, uh, and also be in the presence of and, and having been mentored by Dr. Khalid Abdul uh, Muhammad, as well as various leaders. I've, I've had the pleasure of being mentored by uh, former NAACP president, uh, Dr. Benjamin Chavis. Wow. Uh, as well as the likes of the great comedian, uh, 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 my, our dear brother, um, y'all forgive me, <laughs> it's early Dick in the Gregory. morning. Dick Gregory, thank you. And that brother uh, was instrumental in my life a as well. He wow. has influenced me over the years. Um, and so having those kind of people in my life, they guided me through some pretty uh, extreme times, uh, you know, uh, this work, I don't need to tell you guys, in, in this work of helping our people, it comes with a lot of flack from outside sources. So those individuals, and of course, the leadership of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan has guided me through some ups and downs and trials and tribulations. So I have been in the Nation of Islam 34 years. Mm -hmm. I am currently retired from, uh, from Austin Energy in Austin. I worked in the electric field for 25 years. Um, I am, I have college hours. I didn't finish like some. I went to the community college in Austin, and from that I became a a behavioral counselor for Job Corps a couple of years, and so cur currently I am back in the retirement phase. Of well, let me stop you there and ask you: um, Can you give us some principles that the Nation of Islam follows? What What are the core principles? Sure, absolutely. So, in the Holy Quran, the Holy Quran outlines. Uh, the, what is called the five pillars of Islam. And, and those pillars are belief in Allah and his messenger, uh, prayer, fasting, charity, and the Hajj or the pilgrimage to Mecca. It is those pr principles that are the pillars of Islam 
and the foundation that we actually stand on. I'm going to let Fred ask questions, but before I do, I want to ask, who is Allah? So Allah is God. It is the Arabic connotation for the word God that we, we pronounce in English, uh, or in Spanish, it would be Dios. It depends on the region you come from and the, the language that they speak. But we understand him to be Jehovah. We understand him to carry many names. And as a matter of fact, we're taught in the Holy Quran that Allah has 99 attributes. Whoa. To his name. So. Correct. Yeah. The issue to me over the years has been uh, the difference mm. in interpretation of how you get to heaven, okay? okay? Our people have believed for centuries that Jesus is the way to mm -hmm. heaven. Mm -hmm. They believe in Jesus. Mm -hmm. They trust Jesus. Mm -hmm. They pray to Jesus like mm -hmm. they pray to God. I understand, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, mm -hmm. the nation or the Muslims do not believe Jesus is the Son of God and that mm -hmm. you have to go through Jesus to get to heaven. How do you reconcile? Somebody's got to be right. Somebody's got to be wrong. <laughs> they both can't be right. Okay. So how do you how do you interpret that? So what we're taught in the nation of Islam, you cannot be a Muslim in the nation of Islam and not believe in Jesus Christ. In fact, the the fourth surah of the Holy Quran calls him the Messiah. So we understand him as the Messiah and the Son of God. We absolutely understand that you cannot have a proper relationship with God unless you have a proper relationship with Jesus or any of the prophets in the in the scriptures. So we absolutely, we absolutely subscribe to Jesus Christ. Absolutely. But you're putting Jesus, you say, like any other prophet in the scriptures. Christians believe Jesus above the, the prophets. Uh, he's, he's the Messiah. He's the Messiah. <laughs> yes, yeah. So how do you reconcile that if, if how, how do you how do you reconcile it? So, it, it, in truth, he's as I said, he's the Messiah, and Messiah is definitely, in terms of a rank structure, for a lack of better terms, but he is definitely over the prophets. So, so we honor that. You, you absolutely. do believe that? Absolutely, absolutely. Because, because, the, the because uh, what I've heard, and I'm glad you're here to, to mm -hmm. clarify. It. Mm -hmm. that he isn't over the he is just another prophet but now you're saying that he is over the prophets but puts him at a higher level than the prophets well, sure if, he, if you are messiah the, <laughs> if you are savior i mean uh, you are definitely over just a prophet i mean a prophet you know not not to undermine or underscore that or to not to deflate what a prophet is. Okay. A prophet We're should be in that. that. So, yeah. yeah, I'm trying to be careful with my words. But <laughs> but a, pro a prophet is definitely someone to behold. But when you are the Messiah, you you are the person that is is called upon to save lives. Mm -hmm. You are the person that is called upon to be the example mm -hmm. of God. You are the vicegerent to God himself. And so we, we hold Jesus in the highest esteem and the highest regard. It, it, it has been taught, unfortunately, by many before the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan to cheapen uh, the power and the force that is Jesus Christ. But we, we don't prescribe to him being... Nothing, Dennis, nothing other than a savior. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. I'm going to ask you a tough question, and after I get finished asking sure, you a yes, question, sir. if you will answer, and then I'll let uh, Sharon ask her questions. This is going to be tough. How do you um, make the difference between Mr., uh, not Minister, but uh, Farrard? What's his name? What do you call him? Uh, Master Farrard. Mom. Okay. Yeah. And Jesus. Uh -huh. And before you go into that, for our viewers, please tell them who Master Farrar is. So Master Farrar Muhammad is, is the founding father of the nation of Islam. He came from the holy city of Mecca and established the nation of Islam July 4th, 1930. We regard him as being the savior. He, 
we believe through scriptures that there are more than one Savior. In fact, the Bible tells us that God will call saviors, plural. So we regard him as the Savior for the black man and woman in the West. And so we believe that the spirit of Allah dwelled in this human being. We believe that he is Allah in person. And we believe that the message that he brought to us, the language that he brought to us, the knowledge that he brought to us, surpasses any language that has been brought to us that has been revealed in the world through scripture. The Bible tells us that in the last day, the Son of Man would bring to us the measurements of the heavens and the earth. Farad Muhammad brought to us those measurements. He taught us that the, work, the earth weighs six sextillion tons a unit followed by 21 ciphers and that it rotates at the speed of 1,037 and a third miles per hour. He also taught us that the the land mass was 57,255,000 square miles. He said that the, the, the water itself was 139,685,000 square miles. He, he taught us that the sun is approximately, the earth is approximately 98 million miles from the sun. Let me stop you there for yes, a second. Sir, absolutely. I just want to tell our audience and, and, and Caleb, that is something that I really love about the nation of Islam. <laughs> this guy just rattled off some statistics <laughs> that most folks could not rattle off. And, and, he, and he's done that uh, very well. Sharon. Okay, I have a couple of questions. Yes, ma'am. One is the the role of women mm -hmm. in the nation of Islam. Uh, there's been a thought that the women are submissive. Mm. Is that the case? <laughs> Well, let's, <laughs> are you going to get in trouble? I said, well, I have to laugh. So, I'm married to a black woman, and my wife is from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Let's just be real. This is black women in America. How many black women do you know mm -hmm. are going to let some man run him over? No, since we, we are taught in the nation of Islam that the, 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 the black woman, that nation can rise no higher than this woman, okay. that the black woman should be put on a pedestal, we're taught that she is the second self of God. We're taught that she should be protected. She should be defended. We should be willing to give our lives for our women. She is secondary, but most necessary. And when we say secondary, secondary to only God, we're taught that she's God's woman and we should honor her as such. So to be honest with you, the women in the nation are so adored, so well taken care of that some may say that they're spoiled. <laughs> you know, that's kind of interesting. So I'm thinking about some movies that I've seen. Sure. Okay. Uh, not going to name one, but it seems like what you just got finished describing mm -hmm. is counter to how the, the women are portrayed mm -hmm. in movies. Have mm -hmm. you seen the same thing? Yes, ma'am. They stay home. They're meek yes, and mild. You know, yes, you, know, they'll, you, know you say jumps, how high you want me to jump? Yes, ma'am. So we, I, I don't know which month, movie you're speaking of, but I've seen many that, and if it's reflective of some of the Middle Eastern cultures, mm -hmm. we don't subscribe to any of those cultures. It's not Islam. When my daughter, in fact, when my oldest daughter was born, uh, we had a Middle Eastern doctor, and he saw that her name was Raja Muhammad, and he went, oh, you all are Muslim. And he went, so you don't shave her head? So my daughter had beautiful, long, curly hair. I was like, no. Mm. We, uh, well, what do you mean? He, Wait, it's Islamic culture. It's not the Islamic culture, sir. It's nowhere in the Holy Quran. You can show me where we shave the head. Well, we do it in the Middle East. I said, but that is not Islam. So some of the things that we see on television, is not necessary, necessarily Islam, is not the nation of Islam, is not what is quote unquote to taught by Prophet Muhammad, taught by Master Farad Muhammad for us, taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad nor the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Mm -hmm. that, that stuff is, is, for lack of better terms, garbage. <laughs> Let's, let's go back to uh, Far Farad. Yes, sir. Before you said that Jesus is above 
all the prophets. Mm -hmm. Now you're yes, saying sir. God is equal to Jesus, to black people? Mm. Yes, sir. Why would God make that uh, distinction? Why would he send us a separate uh, savior. savior from all the rest of the world? So every faith, every group, Every group on the planet has been given a savior. You, you, you go to China, they might say Buddha. Right, yeah. You, 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 you go in Jewish culture, they may say Moses. You, you, and some okay. of the, because I don't know if anybody knows on this panel, but Jews don't believe in Jesus. They believe in Moses. They set a place on, the ta on their table for the con coming and return of Moses. Right. So we're saying that God came to us as it is written in the scriptures in Genesis chapter 15, verse 13 through 14, that, he, that when God was telling Abraham, he said, know of a surety that your seed will be trapped in a strange land and they will be afflicted by people for 400 years. And then the scripture goes on to say, and then I will come. So we understand that Master Farad Muhammad is God in person and that he fulfilled the scripture and he is the one that came to us to resurrect black people as a whole from the condition uh, that that we have been in. I see you jump, Fred. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then, so, so then, as black people, if we don't believe in him and we believe in Jesus, where does that leave us? What if I told you they were the same people? <laughs> So you're putting for 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 God with Jesus, yes sir, as equals, yes sir. No, but I, I, I think what, what, sense, what, before, I think he's saying said, where they're equals. I think he's saying they're the same person. You said that all the prophets are below. So you said for God was more than a prophet. He yes, was, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, okay, absolutely. Personification. <laughs> What'd you say? I said, it sounds like a personification of God. Yeah. So let me ask a question. Um, yes, you brought up the Jews. Yes, sir. We know that the nation of Islam, along with um, Minister Farrakhan, mm -hmm. has really, uh, I don't want to say, I, I guess I should say, focused on the Jews, okay? And they have also called white people the devils. Can you kind of explain both of those things? Are they both the same? Is Are the Jewish the devil and are the white people as equally responsible for what has happened to the black man as the Jews have? Please so, expound upon that. First, I'll, I'll say this in regards to the Jews. We, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan told us, he said, we don't have time as black people in the condition we are to focus on white people. We don't have time to focus on what Jews have done and, and you know, but well, what we have to do is take the same wood that's lying around in our communities and start to rebuild those communities and employ ourselves to be responsible for ourselves. So we are not a, a, an organization of hate. There is no way you can help a man off drugs that has been addicted to heroin for 20 years to clean up its life, or a woman that maybe was a prostitute or a man that maybe was a pimp for so many years. There's no way you can change gangsters from gangsters to being saints if it was a hate-filled organization. So we don't hate any any race of people. But we're, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan was just recently on uh, our brother's show Oh man, I it's for Roland Martin. Thank you, beloved. So as we were watching him on the Roland Martin show, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan explained how this thing happened with the Jews. When Jesse Jackson was running, he put his name in to run for president. The, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan became uh, a surrogate spokesperson uh, for Jesse Jackson. And when he was defending Jesse Jackson because he could see that the Jews were lining him up. And so he was trying to protect Brother Jesse to keep him from being potentially assassinated. And so in the process, the Jews that were in authority at that time 
misconstrued some of the minister's words. I ain't going to just say misconstrued. They lied. They took the minister's words out of context purposely. They said that he uh, he subscribed to Hitler. It, it, they said that he uh, he believed that the works that the Hitlers did was a good thing or a great thing. We don't subscribe to nobody being uh, uh, made out of soap, their bones being used as necklaces. Because didn't we experience, experience that as black Bro people? Brother Cedric, we, uh, we're running out of time. No, I'm sorry. Uh, no, no problem. Uh, everything that you've said has been great. Yes, sir. Uh, I want to thank you for coming, yes, and sir. I would like to ask you one last question. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Did the nation kill Malcolm? No. <laughs> I, you know, there's new evidence that just came out, and we already knew as members of the nation. I've been in the nation 34 years, but there's new evidence that came out now that the ladies, his daughters, and some of the family members are boldly talking now that the information that came out from uh, the the government, uh, you know, that Contel Pro, what they were following uh, Brother Malcolm, and there was a police officer in New York that worked with the feds. He came forward on his deathbed and confessed that they that the Brother Malcolm was assassinated by the government. Thank you for that uh, information. We well, let me say this if, if I got a quick second, but we are taught in the nation of Islam not to carry so much as a pen knife. We don't carry weapons in the nation. I've been in this thing 34 years, and I've been in some of the most inner working, uh, inner works of the nation of Islam. I, so much so that I, I was blessed to see one of the bank accounts of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. So some of the lies that people say about the nation is is just to to stop us from helping our people, uh, to be honest. But we don't make maneuvers like that. We don't follow people all across the world and put bugs in there. If you read the autobiography of Malcolm X, put bugs in the hotel rooms. We don't practice those sort of things. We're not firebombing people. We don't do that. But it's been done to us by other organizations and outside sources. Thank you and, so much yes, for, sir, absolutely. Uh, for explaining that. Absolutely. Uh, unfortunately, we're out of time. The discussion has been really great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and when we come back, we'll be discussing uh, with our panel uh, the information that was just given to us by uh, the minister. Uh, not, would you be called a minister? Just call me Brother Cedric. Brother Cedric. When <laughs> we come you. back. Yes, Thank sir. you for Thank coming. You. Appreciate it. Thank you.